Welcome back everyone to Grand Tactician the Civil War. It is September 11th, 1862, and as soon as this episode starts, we have this newspaper article to cheer about. It says, London cheers Confederate victory. The British stand ready to assist. Invasion force be informed. The Confederates welcome European support. News of Confederate victory reaches Europe. British intervention went from 70-some percent to instantly 100% as soon as I started this episode. The British are coming. British Army, Army in Canada mobilized. Reinforcements coming across the Atlantic. Confederacy recognized by the British. This is the first time in all the campaigns I've done on this game where I have achieved British intervention. So now we will be watching to see where that unfolds. Will they be marching across the border? From Canada, it appears they are. There's an army of Canada uh, forming with 21,000 men in the north. We'll see if there's more than that that eventually come. But boy, that changes things in a heartbeat. Let's see what else happens today. And now there's a glorious victory in the Atlantic. The Atlantic Squadron in retreat. I don't know if that was anything I did or is that the British showing up? It looks like it is. I see a British flag in New Jersey. So it looks like the British came along, 15 ships under Commodore Milne, and they have won a victory. So we're getting British naval assistance in addition to that army that is marching down out of Canada into northern New York. So good things are happening everywhere. Now if we could just get some recruits into the field so we can get the rest of our units going. Well, here's the good news. We're starting to see that number go up just in the last couple of days it climbed all the way up to 170,000 so I think what's happening is that our recruits are pouring into the existing units that needed them uh, before they start being made available to be put into new units so I'm gonna uh, see if I can go into the existing units and turn off recruitment for those uh, and that might solve the problem and allow us to start building up so we can get the rest of our units recruited in the meantime We've got some combat. It looks like the first corps is going to be going up against uh, the second corps to start. And then over time, further reinforcements are going to be showing up. And we're going to have a massive battle here in Virginia between the armies around Fredericksburg. Well, this is interesting because in this case, we have the first corps coming across basically where the Union Army was historically at Fredericksburg. Uh, and the Union may be coming in from over here, and it may be coming in from back here. So we just don't know for sure. And when my reinforcements arrive, they're going to come in from this side. So uh, I think we're going to try to find a place to cross that does not involve putting pontoon boats across in front of Fredericksburg, which was what happened historically. Um, we'll see what we can come up with here. Well, I guess crossing is possible. It looked like there were like the possibilities of pontoons there but not actual pontoon bridges so I don't know exactly how that works but we're marching across the Rappahannock River so let's go ahead and make this happen I'm gonna go ahead and start getting these divisions to the other side before we run into any issues I don't see any sign of the Union Army so far okay he's actually defending way back here uh, is where we're starting to spot the enemy. So uh, it's going to take a while to get up near him. We're probably not going to be doing that on this particular first day. So the closer I can get to him, the better off I'll be to be able to redeploy after nightfall. So let's try to rush our troops up to that area so we're able to redeploy them uh, and get them lined up exactly the way I want. And we'll have the reinforcements coming. Uh, Johnston's second corps is 13 hours away, so we'll have them in the morning, but he'll also have his men in the morning, and I don't know where they're coming from. Okay, so here we go, day two. I have no idea where his other troops are, but here's the numbers we're looking at. 72,000 Union on the field, estimated. 64,000 for me. He's only got 30 guns, estimated. We've got 113. Problem is, there's not a lot of great places to use them up here, so... Uh, we're going to start trying to move the 2nd Corps into position. It's going to take them a while to do that just because of the location that we're in. Uh, so in the meantime, I'm going to start attacking with the 1st Corps. We're dealing with some fragmentation issues, and I really don't know why. I don't know why these guys are showing up as fragmented. 
uh, but we're going to have to wait until they're in a better situation before we can attack. Uh, now this division here, the sexy division, looks good. I think we'll be able to attack with them okay. I'm going to go ahead and send out their skirmishers for the time being. I'm going to do the same with Anderson, but until he's no longer in a disrupted state, I don't think I'm going to do anything with him. Uh, I'm going to send the Cav out in a couple of different places just to keep an eye on what's happening out on my flanks and behind me because I don't want him showing up somewhere where I didn't expect him. So he appears to be pulling back. <clears throat> I guess he doesn't like the look of things. Anderson's division is in good shape now, or at least better shape than it was, so I'm going to go ahead and start moving them up. I'm going to pull a couple of the 2nd Corps divisions down here just to keep an eye on my rear, since I have no idea where he's coming from. And then we're going to start slowly inching forward. And we're going to run into combat here in just a minute. It's going to start right in the center near these woods. Morale's about 10 points higher than his right now, so not a huge difference. Let's go ahead and start moving some more of these units up. Let's move Hood's division forward right up to the water here. Dig in behind this creek bed. He's in a fortified position there, so we're going to want to try and hit him from the side as best we can and not directly. Really no good places to use my artillery. Let's throw some cav right here in the center. We're just keeping an eye on things over here because it's certainly possible that he could show up from back there somewhere. He could also show up over here on my left flank. Try to get Gonzo's Gators over here on the right. Let's also pull the skirmishers back in. Because they're behind me now. Carswell's Crusaders are right in the center of this under William Barksdale. But they're not going to be able to hold out for very long if this continues. Try to get help up there as, much, as quickly as we can. I'm gonna pull skirmishers back in from the Green Berets. And get their whole division right up on the line. All right, we're losing casualties pretty quickly. I'm not crazy about that. We're gonna have an advantage right here because we got one brigade for the Union out here on this side, and he's facing a whole division of mine. But again, for some reason the skirmishers don't stay out in front when they get into combat like this, they drop behind. Barksdale's not going to last very long at this rate. Let's pull Clayburn right up to the, to the line too. Still keeping an eye out because we still don't see most of his army. We're only seeing a couple of divisions. Oh man, I'm really worried about Barksdale. Rhodes Guard is up here and getting into position, a good position. Let's get the Imperial Stormtroopers right up here on the line. Bring the hum Hungarian Impalers around as well. And so they're going to move up a little closer. He does have the high ground on me at the moment. I just don't like where Barksdale is. 
I don't think there's an easy way to pull him back, so we're just going to have to hold him where he is for now. Call your skirmishers in hood. Calgary Highlanders have taken 800 casualties. That is not a good situation there. Man. So about 2,700 on each side. <clears throat> which is not good for me because that's a higher percentage of my men. I'm not liking how this is going so far. Okay, there is brigade coming up from the south that's exactly what I was worried about and exactly why I decided to cover that side because I didn't want to get surprised there so if we can hold him off back here and isolate and destroy a part of his army we'll be in good shape just need to get these guys moving a little faster than they are Parksdale's lost a thousand men now, eleven hundred. Calgary Highlanders are losing a lot of men too. Parksdale was just wounded. Right, they're coming at him from multiple sides over here. And I just got a glimpse of another one over here. I'm gonna send Cox Division back there. Tell Anderson to keep moving. I want Claiborne to keep moving. We're going to have to press things over here. Try and take these guys out. We're taking more casualties than hitting, and I don't like that at all. Although the morale situation has improved somewhat. Sibley, you need to dismount and prepare to stand and fight. And you're going to have to have it cut out for you there, Roth's Rangers. Row, Canadian, uh, row mounted Canadians are going to get over there to try to help. Hawes finally broke. I'm not real surprised by that. They were under a lot of fire. They lost 1,400 men, the Calgary Highlanders. Fortunately, there's just nowhere good to put my artillery, and I've got that big artillery advantage. Carswell Crusaders, there they go. I knew that was bound to happen eventually. Oh boy, Ross Rangers are going to be taking on three brigades here in a second. Thankfully, they've got help coming. Pulling everybody in now. I don't know what Jones is doing. I'm going to tell Claiborne to keep pushing. Alright, Ross Rangers, hang on, buddy. Royal Mounted Canadians are on their way to help. More help coming from the other side with Gordon. We're closing the trap on this Union Redoubt up on this hill here. Although so far things are shifting against me a little bit. Man, that's some high casualties. Almost 10,000 men between the two sides now. 
just got to try and break these guys. How are we doing over here? Willamette Guard. We've lost 150 men. Devil's Own Brigade under Richard Garnett. They're facing the guys that are in fortifications. We really got to try and push from the other sides. Come on, push up. Hellriders, get up there. Oh, there's some more men coming down now. I do have an infantry division headed this way. Ugh. Things are not trending in the right direction. really got to try and press this attack. Claiborne's finally getting in on the action a little bit. We've got the 18th Royal Irish Regiment under Cullen Battle. They're a small unit, but they'll do the job. Problem is a lot of these guys are tired. How are we doing here? Willamette Guard's doing all right. They're about to get their perk. Okay. Sibley's about to break. Gordon, turn and fire on these guys. Barksdale just broke right through the line there. Oh, this is a mess. Just taking a long time for my guys to get into position. Especially Anderson. I need Anderson to get up here. Doing pretty good over here. Gonzo's Gators have lost 1,100 men. Virginia Legion 600. This whole division, sexy division, has lost 3,000 men. Oh. That's a lot for one division. I don't know about all this. Just don't know. Roth Rangers low on ammunition. Why do we have a division back here? McClaws, what are you doing, buddy? We're going to send McClaws over there. He's only got two brigades. Alright, both of these brigades, if we can collapse this flank, we might have a shot. Oh, boy. Alright, I want to take a look at some things real quick. So while the Sexy Division has taken 3,000 casualties, they've also dished almost 3,700 casualties. So they're given as good as they're getting. Uh, Holly's Hurricanes has inflicted 100, so that's the best probably among all of our artillery. Uh, looks like Carswell Crusaders have inflicted a lot on the cavalry. Um, so, I mean, it's kind of a mixed bag of things. So far, our second corps has only inflicted 233 casualties. So that just gives you a little bit of an insight into how little they've been involved so far. We're still waiting to get all of them moved into position. So we've got this infantry division coming up now. 
they're going to be able to get in on the action. Sibley finally broke. We're going to finally start getting the second core into the fight over here. And hopefully, this is where we see the tide turn. If we can break these units in here, we can probably shift this back and win this thing. But we need everybody else to hang on while that happens. Gonzo's Gators is going to break pretty soon. They're low on ammo and they've taken a ton of casualties. I can't get any of this artillery in on the action just because I can't really get into a good spot with a clearing to be able to get them where they can fire. Canadians losing a lot of men. We expected that. This, the cavalry was really just there to delay things and to buy us time, and they've done that and done it well. All right, there's more coming down over here, Hooker and Steedman. But this is where the battle is going to be for the win. Ooh, so many casualties. guys are exhausted from a long march, but they've got to fight. I think we got another division coming somewhere here. There they are. They're going to try to come in on this side, but it's going to take them a while to get there. And they're going to be exhausted when they do. Alright, let's keep pushing. Hungarian Impalers push up. They've only lost 114 men. Imperial Stormtroopers have only lost 52 men. Most of the action's been over here on this side. Enemy's first cavalry withdrew. Where where's I put our strength numbers right now? Fifty-four thousand for us, sixty thousand for him. Fifteen percent casualties on both sides. Try to get some fresh units into the action here. How many casualties is this guy taking? 700. I need somebody to break over here. I'm going to pull Loring back. And I'm going to pull Withers back. They've almost run out of ammo. And they've taken a ton of casualties. Now here comes the push against my infantry over here. And Gordon's Hellriders are about to take it on this side. They're going to have to, <coughs> excuse me, buy time while this division gets into place. Maybe I can send some of this artillery over there to help out. There's some open ground over here. They might actually be able to fire and support what's happening. While we try to continue things here. It's shifted back to a minor victory. speed things up a little bit. It's still not even noon. All of this fighting, all of these casualties have happened in the morning hours. We're looking at 22,000 casualties. I mean, we're rising to Antietam level casualties, and it's all been done before noon. Loring, I want you out of there. Man, look at how many brigades are coming down on this side. We've got to break this side before this falls apart over here and this turns into an absolute bloodbath. Oh, there's Union Cavalry coming down this way now. And I've got nobody over there to stop them, except for a couple of units that have suffered major casualties. 
An enemy unit disintegrated with many men surrendering. That's what we were hoping for. All right, here we go. Now we're seeing it. All right, we're gonna we're gonna make it out of here with a victory before he collapses my very tenuous right flank over here. And we're still waiting on the lost division over here to get into place, but we're not gonna need him. All right, press the attack, boys. Hood's division's lost 3,000 men. We just need one more unit to break before any of mine do, and this will be a, a victory. Oh boy. Hang on, boys. Oh, he's pulling out. He's pulling out. I think we got this. It's turned into a major victory now because of the casualties involved on the Union side. Uh, a lot of that because of that brigade that we took out. He's up to 17,000 casualties now. Claus is finally getting into position. Man. This has been intense. Go in, Claiborne. In fact, you know what? Let's give him assault orders. Same for Anderson. There they go. They're breaking now. He got into combat with this uh, this cavalry unit, and it looks like we just broke them. Interesting that we haven't been able to shift it the rest of the way, even with these additional breaking units. It just seems stuck right there. We've completely collapsed this pocket. And he's pulled back everywhere else. All right, I think that's it. All right, so there it is. We lost 12,000 men out of our 64,000. That's going to take a while to recover from, but we inflicted 22,000 casualties on William French's Army of the James. Uh, let's take a look at some specific numbers here because I'm kind of curious. Um, you can see the casualties that were suffered, almost all of them, 10,000 by the First Corps. But combat report, you can see the First Corps inflicted 14,000 casualties, whereas the Second Corps, who suffered 2,500 casualties, inflicted 6,000. Because they came in, the First Corps had the harder job. They had to hold, they had to engage the enemy while the Second Corps came in to attack and disrupt and destroy them. So, um, Sexy Division and Anderson's Division did most of the killing in that fight. Anderson's division specifically, Imperial Stormtroopers, 1,500 inflicted casualties. Hungarian Impalers inflicted 2,000 casualties. Uh, so good day for them. And then, of course, in the Sexy Division, uh, Gonzo's Gators inflicted 1,700 casualties. Virginia Legion inflicted 1,300. Uh, let's take a look at the Second Corps. Confederate Royal Division and Anderson's Division inflicted the most. Ruhr Valley Brigade inflicted 700 casualties. Um, 1,000 inflicted by the 18th Royal Irish Regiment, or nearly so. So good job for them. So how we're going to do this and how we're going to be able to finally create all of our units from the new recruits that are coming in is we're going to go ahead and tell the armies in the field not to put a pri high priority on reinforcing the units that are existing in the field, for now anyway. And we're also going to tell them to only replace them with volunteers. Uh, that'll allow us to start building up that drafty base a little bit uh, and give us some time to start putting new units into the field. And once we get all of our units recruited that we want to recruit, then we can start letting those units build back up. So that should buy us some time to be able to do that. We'll start seeing that uh, draft number start to build up a little bit. Two other things that are going to help us a lot. 
Uh, bounties number one, we're 18 days away, and then the Militia Act 3 we'll uh, put in place after that. So uh, 18 days plus 37 days, so another month and a half of game time, and we'll really start to see those numbers go up. Our, our credit rating's in a good place right now, so let's take a look at our finances. Uh, for just a minute we're, we're fighting these little skirmishes outside of fredericksburg for some reason i'm not sure why um, so let's take a look at finances for a second uh, we've still got recruitment maxed out i've dropped back on diplomacy now that that's no longer a concern for me since we got british intervention uh, we're raising agriculture up some because uh, i think that'll help out and let's just kind of pull back for a second and look at the situation I wish we could see some more British help with the Navy. Uh, we're just not seeing that happen right now. Our James River Squadron's got 128 guns, so maybe that's the one to send after this Atlantic Blockading Squadron. We might be able to take out a few ships there. I don't know. We've got a couple of squadrons down there, too. We're still holding the forts for the most part. He hasn't really threatened us anywhere significantly. And everything looks good out west. There's just really not a lot going on at the moment. Everybody's kind of parked around Nashville and not really doing anything. Uh, same goes in East Tennessee. We've got Stephen Lee's 7,000 men there, and there's just not a lot going. Let's see what's happening with the British Army up north. The British Navy must be having some fun here because we're seeing some fires in some Union areas. So he must be raiding with his Navy. British Army, the Army of Canada, is still just sitting there in New York at the moment. Now here's a British Expeditionary Corps, 24,000 men, so that helps. So we lost two ships, sending our James River, River Squadron to attack the Atlantic Blockading Squadron. Kind of figured that wouldn't go real well. Glorious victory at Hampton Roads, though. Uh, the British Intervention Fleet is in retreat. How is that? I'm not sure how that is a victory for me because the British retreated. I think there's a little mistake there. So there are recruit bounties are now available and the next thing we're going to do is Militia Act 3 and both of those are going to have the impact of increasing the number of available recruits that we're going to have. Um, looks like volunteers available have actually gone up quite a bit. Victory at Pennsylvania Canal by the British Expeditionary Forces. Let's take a look at that here for a second. So there's a battle. Uh, the Army of Canada has come down into Pennsylvania along with the British, British Expeditionary Corps. So 40,000 men between those two units. Um, let's go ahead now and take a look. We're starting to see a little bit more in terms of available volunteers. So maybe what we need to do um, at least for the time being, is instead of telling these armies to recruit from volunteers, they should only take from draftees. Maybe that is what will allow us to build up a volunteer base quicker so we can recruit these other units. So we just unlocked Chapter 3, A War So Terrible, which means now that these policies down here in Chapter 3 are going to be coming available, which means Conscription Act 2 will be available, will allow further recruitment uh, efforts. All of that, I'm really hopeful, is going to finally get us where we want to be. I don't know why the auto manage panel uh, is selected there. I, okay, that was checked a minute ago, and I have no idea why, because we definitely don't want that. Why is Militia Act... Oh, that's why, because we're doing two things at once here. We don't want impressment. So we're about a month away from... Militia Act 3, and then I think we're going to be able to queue up some more reinforcements. So the U.S. military just won a victory over the British in Hagerstown, Maryland, but that's okay. The British are keeping the U.S. military occupied while we build up our army. Uh, so that's the important thing in our case. British intervention dropped to 82%. I'm not entirely sure how British intervention drops when they're already intervening. Who was rehabilitated? The Army of Canada disintegrates. Oh, that's bad. All right, so the Army of the Tennessee, uh, the Union Army, is going to attack Nashville. 
Uh, we're going to have the edge in numbers slightly, but we will save that battle for the next episode. We're going to wrap it up right there. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below, and we will be back very soon. Thanks for watching.